The special counsel seeming to shield his face from the intensifying media glare Thursday morning as he arrived to work. The scrutiny stepped up after the attorney general belittled Mueller's complaints about the way Barr characterized the special counsel's report to Congress at the end of March. You know, it, the letter's a bit snitty, and I think it was probably written by one of his staff people. The jab went unanswered by Mueller's team, who declined to comment. The relationship between Barr and Mueller appears to be fraying. It was just earlier this year that Bill Barr touted their friendship at his confirmation hearing. You know, the Barrs and Mullers were good friends and, and would be good friends when this is all over and so forth. In fact, the two go back decades. They've known each other since at least the 1980s when they both worked at the Justice Department. Barr was deputy attorney general. Mueller was in charge of the department's criminal division. I have known Bob Mueller for 30 years. We worked closely together throughout my previous tenure at the Department of Justice. We've been friends since, and I have the utmost respect for Bob and his distinguished record of public service. Their relationship extended beyond the office. Their wives went to Bible study together. The Bars and Mullers have attended each other's children's weddings. But Barr's close friendship with the man probing the president reportedly caught Trump off guard. Sources say the president complained to aides that he was unaware just how close the special counsel and his attorney general pick were. In January, Bill Barr even rebuffed the president's favorite phrase to defend Mueller's nearly two-year investigation. I don't believe Mr. Mueller would would uh, be involved in a witch hunt. But lately, Barr's tone has seemed to shift. Do you believe that the investigation that uh, Director Mueller undertook was a witch hunt or illegal, as been asserted by the president? It really depends on where you're sitting. Barr criticized Mueller yesterday for not coming to a complete conclusion on obstruction. The other thing that was confusing to me is that the investigation carried on for a while. So my question is, uh, or was, why were those investigated if at the end of the day you aren't going to reach a decision on them? Their differences in legal and public relations strategy now on full display. Mueller wrote two letters to the attorney general in late March telling Barr his four-page letter to Congress did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of the office's work and conclusions. I said, Bob, what's with the letter, you know? Why don't you just pick up the phone and call me if there's an issue? All right, you all know the players here more than anyone. David Priest, let me start with you because uh, we're still awaiting confirmation from Mueller, uh, you know, on this date last night. Right. Um, you know, uh, Mary Gay Scanlon was on the show. She was definitive it was May 15th. Now there's questions, will it or won't it? Uh, so what's Mueller going to do uh, if he does appear? We have lots of evidence from the past that will suggest what Mueller will do. And that is he'll answer the questions truthfully. He'll answer any questions as forthright as he can. And he's not going to play games because we have literally hundreds of hours of testimony that Robert Mueller has given before congressional committees. And you're not going to find scandal. You're not going to find diatribes. You're not going to find political gamesmanship in those mm -hmm. hearings. Bob Mueller plays it straight. And that's what I suspect he would do in these hearings as well. So, David Rifkin, you know Bill Barr well, right? And he made a point of saying he knows Mueller well. As we point out, their wives know each other well. They're, 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 they're friendly. Why do you think he got so personal yesterday when it came to talking about Mueller? You know, there, was, there were several moments, but I, I think that moment when he used the word snitty showed um, some emotion. It showed what he, what he thought, and it was a sort of nasty thing to say about somebody. Uh, go ahead. Aaron, let me make a following prediction. Uh, yeah. Then uh, Special Counsel Mala testifies. Uh, I agree with testify truthfully and fully. Yeah. And I'm going to find any daylight between what he is going to say mm. and what the Attorney General has said. That's the important thing. As to the Sneedy remark, look, it is there can be some nuanced differences between Mr. Mueller and Mr. Barr. Mr. Barr, of course, is the Attorney General. Mr. Mueller is an inferior officer about how you summarize in four pages a nearly 500-page report. A couple of points, however. At the time the summarization took place, uh, Bill Barr offered, we know that from reporting and his testimony, and Mr. Mueller an opportunity to read the letter. Mr. Mueller declined that. That's true, Several but Mr. Days, Mueller also the, had offered him four no, versions finish. written by his own team, which no, Barr refused to use. No, uh, this was a report to the Attorney General. It was a job of the Attorney General to decide what summary to provide. The executive summaries that Mr. Mueller put forward were going to be all released. You've got to understand something, and this is what infuriates me. The whole notion about a, some kind of lying and obfuscation. 
morality aside, law aside, what sense does it make for Mr. Barr to release a misleading summary, knowing full well that he's going to release the full done report with tiny redaction in a matter of weeks? So, so, so look, everybody it's a fair point. Can I get your bold. take on this, David Why are we Preso, obsessing about okay, this? Okay, because you have a point, except for he took weeks to do it. Three percent. took weeks Hold ordinarily would have taken months. Three percent of the American public have read it. Maybe you would put it out because you knew no one would ever read it. And if you put out a nuanced and somewhat misleading summary. You sell American summary, public short. You sell American yes, public short. Yes, you sure would. Important. But how, how can you say for sure that that wasn't exactly what he did? Because that's an absurd with respect supposition. Let me also tell you one other thing. It is highly unusual, and there are debates within the executive branch which had an opportunity to be engaged. You carry those debates passionately in private. It is highly unusual, and indeed, in my opinion, worse than snitty, to send two letters to your boss in a space of several days, several days after the summary was released. Versus picking up a phone, as Attorney General Barr said, and talking so about David it. Priest, so, David Priest, can you yeah. answer? Not, hold on, let me get you in here because I want to give you a chance to answer David Rifkin as to why. Why Mueller yeah. would do that? He, a man that he's known for year, many years. Right. He Let's chooses to down. put in a letter, again, that Barr's summary, which, yeah. which we're all using that word, but Barr says it isn't a summary, did not fully mm -hmm. capture the context, nature, and substance of this right. office's work and conclusions. It's not a minor yeah. disagreement. So, David Priest, why would he put that in a letter as opposed to doing what David Rivkin is suggesting? Because he's doing what your other guest is suggesting, which is he did not go public. Bob Mueller did not call a press conference. He did not invite reporters in to tell them what he thought of the attorney general's non-summary of his report. He put it in a letter to his boss privately. That is exactly what you would do. I was a manager in the federal government. If one of my subordinates thought that I was doing something that was improper with their work, would I want them to ignore it? No, a good manager would want that person, a person of duty and responsibility, to come forward and say, boss, here's how I think you're misrepresenting this. Here's what I think you're doing wrong. And I would want that person to do so in private. That is exactly what Bob Mueller did by giving the attorney general a chance to revisit the summary that he prepared when he said, I don't think this accurately characterizes the nature of what we did, sir, here's a chance to revisit this before you do something like that again. David, he did yeah, it in private. Uh, uh, the David Rifkin, I'm why smiling, would Barr just, just put out thing. the report the way the he did? The reason Work I'm with them smiling to put it out. Okay. is because no serious person can believe but the purpose of those two letters, and I frankly hope it's not Mr. Mueller, but he established as possible. Purpose of those two letters was not to leak them on the eve of Mr. Barr's testimony. Come on, let's be real. Are That's you not how that you Bob carry Mueller out didn't the debate. Those letters that he signed something that his staff prepared I, I and he doesn't he own was, up to it. I'm trying to be charitable to him, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Oh. I believe he was pressured into doing that. This by his staff. I said in many debates at the highest level of government where people yelled at each other because they disagree. Whenever you try to give a sense of what a 400 plus page report says in four pages, reasonable people can disagree about well, it. Well, then he There's shouldn't no have done it. Here. I'm sorry, but it comes back to the certain point that he just shouldn't have done it. No, but you don't what, put uh, something out that may Aaron, not be accurate Aaron, and wait three if, weeks to put the real thing out if, when you know if no one's going to read, re, read the real thing. Let I cannot me tell you get one thing for that. sure. If he waited for weeks to release the full report, well, proper reactions. You and others in the media would have been screaming for his Let head. Let us do it. He and did then we would have had the whole report and made up our own minds he instead did of having his, him color he did the, his the, best. the public's perception. He did his best to release a short summary as he understood the report. And then very quickly, faster than ever in our history, he released the whole darn report with minimum redactions. What more can a reasonable person do? Let's get the partisanship off the table, for God's sake, and stop Aaron, pointing fingers at people. Let me and, leave you with one thought, Aaron, is I got to know Bob Mueller pretty well by briefing him every morning on his daily intelligence in the era after 9-11. If you think this is a man who's going to be bullied by his subordinates into signing a letter that he didn't agree with, you don't know Bob Mueller. Well, then, then I'm sorry. I mean, is that what you're really that. saying? Are you really saying, David Rivkin, that you think Bob Mueller was pressured by his subordinates to I sign think, that letter? Because I, I got to be honest, that does we're sound psycho, a little out we're there. We're psychoanalyzing things. I thought there was pressure in him. Let's see who is right. Why didn't you call us back after he testifies? The bottom line is, I believe it was a wrong. It was not unlawful. I'm not accusing him of illegality, unlike people doing it of General Barr. But it was improper for him to send those two letters 
worded as they were versus picking up a phone. Look, he was given a choice to read the letter. He said no. But wouldn't and then you write a letter several because days. you want it memorialized exactly as the president of the United States told people like Don McGahn he wanted, right? You write a letter because you want it to be part of the record. You, you want it on paper. You don't want somebody's memory of a telephone conversation. Do you not want first to read the darn draft letter and then have a dialogue versus saying no and then waiting several days to see which way it's, so to it, that it point, gets spun David in the Priest, media? Can you answer him why you think Bob Mueller refused to read Barr's summary and waited several days before yep. coming up. We can't get into the mind. I think it's fair to say we can't get into the mind of either Bob Barr or Bob Mueller or into their heart. We don't know what their intentions were. What we have is the actual evidence that is the text of the letter, which is far from snitty. That is not the adjective I would use to describe that letter, nor would I use it to describe Bob Mueller. I would describe it as a good faith effort to say, hey, boss, you're putting something out there publicly, which does not characterize the full text that we have given you. And I'm making you aware of that fact because that's my duty. That's my responsibility. That's the honorable thing to do. It's exactly the thing we should expect government officers to do when their boss is getting something that isn't quite right. That's good government.